Across the history of the Star Wars galaxy, there have been a plethora and constellation of unique and climactic battles that have resulted in the modification of galactic history, changing the course of galactic history as we know it. The famous Battle of Hyporis saw General Grievous take on six members of the Jedi Order, including several members of the Jedi High Council. The Battle of Coruscant saw the death of Count Dooku, and the large extermination of the Separatist leaders, and forcing them into hiding, alongside General Grievous. Perhaps most famously, the Battle of Yavin and the Battle of Endor were two battles that defined galactic history, with the Battle of Yavin introducing Luke Skywalker as the hero of the Rebellion to the wider galaxy and showing his pure or inspiring force sensitivity and skill, with the Battle of Endor ultimately exterminating and destroying the second Death Star and killing Emperor Palpatine. The Battle of Endor and the Battle of Yavin perhaps impacted galactic history more than any other battle in all of the galact galaxy. However, there is one battle that I want to point to that is rather overlooked, and that is the battle on Had Abaddon. This battle, taking place 137 years after the events of Luke Skywalker destroying the Death Star in the famous Trench Run, was a battle in the Second Imperial Civil War and the Third Jedi Purge. This battle saw Darth Kray, Karnas Murr, Cade Skywalker and Celeste Moore, two of the greatest players in all of the galaxy in the Sith, both Krayt and Karnas Murr were two of the most powerful Force users in all of history, and they truly showed it during this battle. So my acolytes, let us proceed, see with the prelude, the aftermath, the battle itself, and how it ultimately culminated in the suspected ultimate extermination of the two most powerful Sith Lords to exist during this time. Starting off by 137 ABY, Darth Kray, the Dark Lord of the Sith and ruler of the One Sith, felt as though his days were numbered, and that he would not live to see his dream of a stable galaxy under the ironclad grip of the Sith come to pass. He was soon unable to purge his body of the Yuzong Vong Biots and growth that threatened to consume him and turn him into a mindless beast, and was only capable of warding off them with his pure sensitivity to the dark side. Uh, he was still unable to do so, and it was greatly worrying and weighing on the Dark Lord's mind. Kray had received word from one of his minions that Cade Skywalker, the last remaining Skywalker and a Jedi with remarkable healing powers, who was capable of even resurrecting his own master from the brink of death, had engaged and defeated Darth Kray's own garrison on the deep core planet of Had Abaddon. Kray had also received a summons from ancient Sith Lord named Karnas Murr, whose spirit currently inhabited an ancient female Jedi Master and the last Jedi from the pre-High Republic era named Celeste Morn, who was over a thousand years old and was preserved by Karnas Murr's spirit. Murr appeared to have Skywalker held captive on Hat Abaddon and offered Krayt both Skywalker as a prisoner and a chance to be healed by Murr's own extreme power, should Krayt allow Murr's spirit to inhabit his body instead. Murr then told Krayt to come alone to Hat Abaddon, and if he did not, Murr would not only kill Skywalker, but Krayt as well. However, Skywalker and Murn were actually attempting to lure Darth Krayt to the Deep Court, where they schemed to ambush and attempt to kill him, along with the Twi'lek Jedi Shadal Val. They partnered with Imperial Knights Antares Draco, Ganna Krieg, and Aslan Ray to lie in wait for the Dark Lord of the Sith to end his iron grip of dark side power on the galaxy once and for all. All parties hid their presences in the Force using Force suppression and awaited the arrival of their mortal enemy that the way all shared. Great then touched down and had Abaddon with Darth's malady, strife, and talent against the explicit orders of Murr, with these three Sith Lords being some of his most loyal followers. His primary advisor, Darth Wylock, was ordered to remain in orbit to gather and accumulate more information on Murr and the claims of his power. Murr then appeared before Krayt in the body of Morn, and Skywalker appeared to be bound in their custody. Murr commended Krayt for his defiance, and reminded him of their deal, but when Krayt questioned the spirit's healing abilities, Murr briefly demonstrated them. At that moment, Skywalker summoned his lightsaber to his hand while loosing his bonds, and attacked Darth Talon, who had sensed his intent in the last moment. Imperials Draco, Krieg, and Rey, along with Jedi Shadow Vow, sprung their trap and arrived to do battle with the Sith Lord of the One Sith Empire. Through 
Mer's talents were Sith magic. Morn commanded her army of Sith spawn Rack Ghouls, a devastating plague which had the capacity to overwhelm and destroy the entire galaxy if it had been allowed to spread. To attack Crate, while the other Sith Lords dueled with the Jedi, Darth Strike dispatched the Rack Ghouls surrounding Crate with the Force Lightning, while Darth Malady fought with Shadow Vow. She openly regarded her opponents with respect for developing a scheme with Sith undertones, as she assaulted the Twi'lek with her own Lightning Barrage. Despite the ferocity of her attacks, Darth Malady remained as evenly matched with Vow through the entirety of their encounter. After defeating Darth Talon in their brief encounter, Cade Skywalker attacks Strife. He force pushed the Sith Lord into a pile of thermal detonators sent by Skywalker's friend Jaria Sin, and later Lover. The resulting explosion engulfed Strife and threw him off the platform. Skywalker then went into battle with Morn's Rack Ghouls, which are doubling by the dozen, who are running rampant and terrorizing Jedi, Sith, and Imperial Knight alike, without discrimination or being boarded back. In the midst of their fighting of the Sith spawn, the Imperial Knights had fallen back to consider their role in the current battle. Draco felt as if there was a duty to retrieve Karnas Mer's Sith Talisman, which gave her the power to transform non-force sensitive beings into an army of Rack Ghouls, which could utterly decimate not only the Sith Empire, but any empire that would continue to rule. However, Ray believed that destroying Krait was paramount, and the three should work to end that unison. Draco responded by instantly force pushing Rey into the ground in disagreement and fury before Krieg interfered. Draco then attempted to move in on Morn, but was immediately found out by her and repelled with force attacks. Mer's spirit then took control of Morn and exposed Draco's treacherous motives while vowing to kill the Jedi, turn Skywalker's companions into Rackles, and take Darth Krieg's body as his home, seeing him as the most powerful vessel the galaxy had to offer. At the last moment, Krieg repelled all the Rackles with an immense blast of force lightning incinerating them and temporarily interrupting the battle. He then fell upon Morn, coaxing her into embrace the dark side of the power of Mer. Then Crate felt within her, abandoning the lightsabers. Crate and Mer began to exchange volleys of crippling force lightning. Malady fell in beside the Dark Lord and aided her power in his attempt to overpower Morn, and Karnas Mer's spirit empowering her. Seeing that Crate was occupied, Aslin Ray called for Skywalker to cover her while she is attempted to finish Crate. Skywalker fended off the advancing Rackles as Ray launched herself at Crate from behind and succeeded in impaling him through the chest, piercing his Yuzong Vong armor with her lightsaber. Crate's concentration was suddenly broken. Most needs a chance to unleash a mar- massive storm of devastating force lightning. One that fully consumed and nearly killed both Ray and Krait, and scattered the remaining combatants around the platform. Mer then hurled Krait's defeated body over a nearby cliff to his apparent death. Ray received some severe burns over most of her body, with nearly all her hair instantly singed away. In the wake of the battle, the Sith were gone, and the Rack Ghouls had been exterminated. Mer was able to momentarily wrench her self-control of Mer before confronting Skywalker, knowing that Mer would very soon take permanent and eternal control. Morn acknowledged her fate and begged Skywalker to kill her. He obliged by running her through with his blade, and upon her death, Morn's body turned to dust, liberating her from the dark influence of Karnas Mer after 4,000 years. The amulet of Mer is in Morn's possession that housed both his spirit and power, now free from Morn's body, immediately latched onto Cade Skywalker's arm. Mer believed that he would make his Jedi his new throw. Instead, Cade displays his immense latent force sensitivity that was a legacy of Anakin Skywalker. By resisting Mer's temptation with the dark side, he then poured sufficient amounts of force energy into the weak points of the sh- talisman using his mastery of the shatter point, and caused it to shatter into pieces, which in turn caused Mer's spirit to fade as an apparition, ending the Sith Lord's over seven millennia long of torment of the galaxy once and for all. Cade then turned his attention to Aslan's condition, and moved to take her aboard the Minoc to get help. He was then stopped by Ganna, who claimed as an Imperial Knight, Ray belonged with them. However, Val used the force push to knock Ganna and Draco away, and he, Cade, and the rest of Cade's crew left to seek out help from Batha Rock. Darth Wylock, having sensed his master in need, had journeyed to the planet's surface. There at the bottom of a canyon, he came across Krait's broken and incinerated body. Wylock was shocked to discover that Krait was still alive, barely clinging onto life, having used telekinesis to cushion his fall. Krait ordered Wylock to take him to a back to tank as his encounter with Mer had taught him the knowledge he finally needed to heal himself of his coral growth of his body. However, Krait would, it seemed, never get a chance to use this knowledge claimed that sometimes for a cause to continue, the leader of that cause must die. Wylock killed Krait with a storm of forced lightning, for taking his corpse to be buried on Korriban. 
However, Crate was able to raise himself due to the use of his implants, and on Korriban, he once more revealed himself to the mutinous Sith Lord the following year. Crate then proceeded to lead an attack on the Temple of the Sith on Coruscant, and murdered Rylock in a brutal duel, in retaliation for his ultimate betrayal. Well, my friends, my acolytes, my students, and my fellow comrades, what did you think of this video? Did you agree with me that the Battle of Had Abaddon was one of the most interesting, as it not only suspectedly and supposedly ended two of the most powerful Sith Lords in history, but it also ended a plethora of Imperial Knights, it, it, and also resulted in the absolute extermination of both Celeste Morn and the possible full extinction of the Rat Gull species, which could have had the ability to take the entire galaxy on under its thrall. I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away, and remember, kneel before the dragon of Zakul.